Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. This video is sponsored by Video Blocks. If you ever need for stock videos, After Effects, or motion background, then Video Blocks is the best option for you. As a content creator, many times you have to use stock videos for your projects. And it can cost you more than your entire budget. But, with Video Blocks, get studio quality stock, for a fraction of the cost. All content on the video blocks are royalty free, so you can use it for commercial, and personal projects. Go to the link in the description, to get all the stock videos you can imagine. So let's get started. Open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it Bounce Logo Animation. As always, I am using the 1920, by 1080 resolution but my frame rate is set to 60 frames per second, and a duration of 10 seconds. The first step is to create a new solid layer. Let's call it the background. Make sure it has the same comp size. And then hit OK. Now go to the effects and the presets, and search for the gradient ramp. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change ramp shape to the radial ramp. And then click on the swap color button, to swap the colors. In case this swap color button isn't available in your version of After Effects, then you can change the color manually, change white to black, and black to white. Cool. Now grab this anchor point, and place it to the center. Select this bottom point, and place it far away from the center. Cool. Now create another solid layer, and call it shade. Make sure to change the color to black. Now go to the tools, and select the rectangle tool. Draw a rectangular mask on the shade layer like this. Now press F, to open feather, and increase the feather value to a higher number. I am keeping a value of 200 pixels to get this kind of softness. Press V, to select the move tool. Double click on any anchor point, and then adjust the size and position of this mask. I am making it bigger than the frame, so that it can cover the entire frame. Cool. This looks good to me. It's time to import our files into the project. You can download these files from the link in the description. Place your logo on top of all layers. Now right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Let's call it logo comp. And make sure to select, move all attributes into the new composition. Let's animate our logo. Go to around 1 second forward, and then press S, to open scale. Now add a keyframe on the scale. Go back to the first frame, and change the scale value to 0%. Cool. Here we have this simple zoom in animation, let's try to make it bouncy. You can zoom into your timeline by pressing the plus key on your keyboard. For zoom out, press the minus key. Now zoom in, until you can see the 10 frames distance here. In case your timeline is showing the frame number, you can press and hold the control key on your keyboard and click here to switch between frame numbers, and the time duration. Cool. Now I can see the time duration. Go to the next 10 frames forward, and change the scale value to 80%. Again go to the next 10 frames forward, and this time, change the scale value to 90%. 
do the same here, but this time, change the scale value to 85%. For the last 10th frame, change the scale value to 88%. Cool. Now select all keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and select easy ease. Open graph editor, and change the curve to something like this. I am changing the first keyframe graph only. In case, your graph does not look like this, then right click here, and choose edit speed graph. Switch back to the timer line, and let sad motion blur to it. In case, this switch tab is not visible here, press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is having some ego problem with you, then right click here, go to columns, and choose switches. Now click on the first box, to add motion blur, and then click here to activate it. Cool. Go to the 2 second time frame, and press N, to set the end playback position. Ram preview this, and see if you like it. Well, this is ok, but I think the speed is a little slower. Select these keyframes, and slide them, towards the first keyframe. Check the animation, and see if you like it now. This looks good to me. Select your logo layer, and then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the CC Jaws effect. Apply it to the layer, and adjust a few settings. First, change the height value to zero. And then we will use this option to make the slice of it. I prefer to use the value of 2, but you are free to choose your own setting. Now change the direction value to 90 degrees. To make it vertical. Here is the important step. Change the first center value, so that it will cover up the left portion of the logo completely. But this is not what we are looking for, we need the invert selection. So let's fix this. Go to the effects and the presets, and search for the invert alpha. Apply it onto the same layer, and here we have this part of the logo, this is what we need to do. For the next step, we just need to change this CC jaw effects value only. Now select the logo layer, and press Ctrl, plus D, to make a duplicate of it. Change the X value of the center, so that you can see the next part of the logo. Zoom in a little, and remove any spaces left between the slices. You should try to remove all the tiny spaces between each slices. Each slice has to be placed next to each other, so that it can cover up the entire logo. So duplicate of the logo, and change the value of the slice position. And make sure to cover up all the left spaces between them. Keep doing this, until you have the entire logo. Cool. Now zoom into your timeline. This time, make sure each second frame time is visible here. Leave the first layer at the same position, and do this for all other logo layers. Make sure they equally have two frames distance with each other. So the first layer on 0, second will be on 2, third will be on 4th, so on. Ram preview this, and you should have the similar animation. Cool. Go back to the project window, and place this lens flare video onto the top of all layers, you can download it from the link in the description. Let's change the blending mode of it, in case this mode tab isn't available here, you can turn it on from the columns section. Now change the mode to screen. Cool. Let's drag this layer to the left, so that, we can change the starting position of the lens flare. I prefer this point. Also, change the playback timing to 5 seconds. Cool. It's time to create a shadow. First, select all the logo layers, right click on it, and choose pre-compose. Let's call it logo animation and then hit OK. 
press Ctrl plus D to make a duplicate of it. Select the bottom layer and make it 3D by clicking here. Now press R to open rotation and change the X rotation value to 93 degrees and place it something like here. Now go to the effects and the presets and search for the fast blur. Apply it onto the layer and change the blur value to 130. Again go to the effects tab and this time search for the hue and saturation. Apply it onto the same layer and change the master lightness value to the negative number to make it a little dark. Cool. Let's add an adjustment layer on top of all layers. Go to layers, new, and select adjustment layer. Let's call it CC. Also, I forgot to rename this layer as the shadow. Select the CC layer, and then go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the curve effect. Apply it onto the layers, and adjust a few settings. I am adding some contrast to it. You can adjust the opacity of the lens flare layer as well. Do some final color corrections, and then RAM preview this. Our animation is complete, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day.